One of the quality control measures that all offices should spend some time on is alginate impression procedures. Alginate impressions are going to generate for us diagnostic models, study casts. It's also going to be the opposing models for crowns, bridges, partials. And so the accuracy of these models cannot be overstated. One of the things that during the years I've had to deal with is new employees that we had to bring up to speed in terms of their alginate impressions. This is going to be a duty which we delegate to our dental assistants, our, our lab assistants. Therefore, spend some time on this process. We'll go over with you the eight keys to real beautiful, accurate alginate impressions. I'm going to give you some insights of different techniques and things that I've learned over the years that will ensure success and accuracy in all you do in this process. You can do this as a two-handed procedure by yourself or a four-handed procedure with a dentist and an assistant. I'm going to show you the four-handed procedure technique and I'll allude to the two-handed procedure because many of you dental assistants out there are going to have to do this all by yourself. I had a, uh, a patient tell me one time that Kathy, my dental assistant who has been with me 22 years, is better than I am. I looked at him and I said, the hell you say? He says, oh yeah. I said, how do you figure that? He looked at me and says, she works without an assistant. At that point, I realized he was probably right. So for all you assistants out there, sometimes if you're feeling a little down, you realize you're working without an assistant, the doctor's not. So let's go through the, the eight keys or the eight steps of this process. Because I've learned over the years, if you have a checklist or a list of things that you can give your employees, then you have a way to determine really what you want then you can communicate it to them and then you have this result at the end that you can verify. So the whole process of determination, communication, and verification in every step you do is critically important in a dental office. Our little patient today is Denise. What's your new last name? Radcliffe. Radcliffe. Denise is recently married last Friday. And so she hadn't gotten a lot of sleep or anything. But she's our treatment coordinator. And um, she has volunteered to subject herself to this video. Let's go through the eight steps. Start by doing a really good oral exam. Take a look in the patient's mouth. Get a light. We're going to get a mirror. I'm going to put some loops on. I'm going to be looking around in Denise's mouth. One of the things I'm going to do is look under their tongue, see if there's any tori. Tori are going to run into that tray. I'll take my finger and feel the depth of the floor of the mouth. We'll then look up into the palate, see if there's a tori there. One of the places, bite down for me now, is loosen up their cheeks and look up into the vestibule. Every once in a while, you'll find a patient that's got these big exostoses out lateral to the molars. And that's a functional thing, but you'll really bang into those with a tray. If you know they're there, you can work around them. You may have to go to a larger tray. This takes about 20 seconds. You can look in the patient's mouth, do a really good oral exam. The second step in this process is to try in the trays. You can get a pretty good idea about how large a patient's arches are and what shape they are by this exam. Denise has actually got a pretty small mouth. She actually has pretty small arches and they're a little bit narrow. And um, so we're going to go to a smaller tray. I'm going to go ahead and try this. This is a rim lock tray. Now I'm going to encourage you to use a rim lock tray. Most everybody that's watching this and it's in the audience is using a perforated tray. The reason I like a rim lock tray is about two or three reasons. Now listen to me. A rim lock, the excess alginate is going to go out into the fornix of the vestibule. And what that's going to do for you is extend the cheeks, extend the lips, 
and you'll get a much better impression of all of that by having the excess go out of the tray this way. A perforated tray, all the excess comes out of the bottom. So you don't get a really nice fold, if you will, or impression of the fornix. The other thing it does for you is it will create a little dam in the back so that the impression material is not going to go running down their throat. Now let me talk about alginate real quick. You want to use regular set alginate. Do not use fast set. Now the reason most people use fast set alginate is because of gagging. They think that if they can take the impression real fast and get it out real fast, the patient's not going to gag. Well, if you want to prevent a patient from gagging, the gag reflex is not from the throat. The gag reflex is on the posterior one-third of the tongue. Think about it. If you want to throw up, you put your finger on your tongue and push down. You don't stick it on your palate. So a rimlock tray is going to cause the excess to go out the back, not drip down onto the tongue. A perforated tray is going to drip down onto the tongue, and that's when a patient will gag. So switch to rimlock trays and use regular set alginate. Now regular set alginate is more accurate than fast set. Alginate sets by what's known as a brush heap configuration. In other words, when it starts to set, it's a brush heap, a heap of brush, like limbs all piled together. And so as it sets, it piles up. Fast set piles up faster. So if you wanted to make a six-foot pile of brush, if you used bigger limbs, it would set faster or you'd get that pile faster. If you had to pile it up with grass, it would take forever. But the grass is far more accurate than the large limbs. So in terms of accuracy, use regular set. The other thing is all alginate comes in a little container that has the mixing instructions on the back of the can. Follow the mixing instructions. I always ask participants in my courses, how long does it take regular set alginate to set? I hear everything from 30 seconds to an hour and a half. Nobody actually really knows. Well right here on the back of the gel trait regular set box it gives you the working time, and then it gives you the set time. Set time for regular set alginate when the water is 68 degrees is three and a half minutes. Okay? So, follow all the instructions. We have performed an oral exam. We've tried our upper tray in. Now we're going to try our lower tray in just to make sure. And I'm going to kind of practice a little bit. Lift your tongue up for me and let it relax. And I'm going to actually take that tray and kind of wiggle it around, see if I'm banging into the teeth. You want a pretty much equal thickness of alginate all around in the tray. And here's something else that's a trick. The hole in the end of the tray that you hang it up in the lab with, that's the midline. Use that as a midline gauge for the patient's face. That's just a little trick. And when you've got it full of alginate, if you want to know if you got it in there right or not, find the hole and line it up with the midline of the patient's face. So, it's not pinching her. I wasn't banging into the teeth, and she was able to get her tongue up through the uh, lingual here, so I feel pretty good about this. The next thing I'm going to do to ensure some accuracy is I'm going to apply some wax to the tray. On the lower, I'm going to put it on the back extent of the impression tray, and I'm going to put a little bit that runs under her tongue and a little bit out onto the buckle shelf. That way, if I run into the retromolar pad and I'll be able to carry some alginate down into the floor of the mouth with that wax, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to put a little piece of wax in the front. That's the way we do it for everybody. A little bit on the back, sublingual. This is actually the retromolar highway space. And then a little bit in the front. I don't cover the whole tray. Now for a denture patient, I will cover the whole tray. But she's not there yet. Okay. That's got the lower one. 
Now on the upper, I'm going to put a post down. What this is going to do for me is it's going to help me contain the alginate within the tray. This is clear rope wax. I think it's a modern materials. And you can see I've got it on the back end back there so that as I push that up, it's going to help me keep the alginate in. Then I got a little piece I'm going to put right on the front. This is very similar to the lower if you think about it. So that when I border mold this or muscle trim this impression, if the frenum or the frenulum runs into that, it'll just cut right into the wax instead of that metal tray. So now we've got wax on our trays. Doing this as a four-handed procedure, Kathy's going to mix the alginate and we use a machine called an alginator. The alginator is nothing more than a bowl on a turntable that spins around. You measure out your powder, you measure out your liquid. Don't eyeball that stuff. Measure it to the manufacturer's recommendations and then as you mix it presses the alginate up against the side of the wall of the alginator bowl. You know, I started out as a dental assistant uh, working for my daddy and we always at the end of the day had about 10 or 15 little green rubber bowls to clean. With this machine you will clean it as you finish it up and wipe out the inside of it and so you never have a big stack of green rubber bowls to clean at the end of the day because you've only used two, one in one room and one in the other. So that has been a real good thing for us. So I'm going to have Kathy go ahead and we will do the upper alginate first. While she's mixing the alginate, let's, let's talk about step four. We know that it takes three minutes and 30 seconds for the alginate to set. Set a timer. So Kathy has incorporated the liquid in the powder and she has set a timer at 3.30. As this alginate is setting, you now know and you can verify that it is set. How do most of you check to see if the alginate is set? You dig your thumbnail into it. The message you're giving the patient is, this girl really doesn't know how long this stuff takes to set. But if you set your timer, everybody knows exactly. And what you've told that patient is, I know my stuff. And our office is a little bit different than everybody else's. That's called added value dentistry, by the way. Step five is to wipe a little bit of alginate on the occlusal surfaces of the teeth. This is important to keep bubbles from forming on the occlusal surfaces. Step six would be to use a mirror to retract the cheek. If you use a mirror, you'll have way more room to work with than if you don't. If you use your finger, your finger takes up all the room of the cheek. Now, I'm checking to make sure that the hole in the handle of the impression tray is lined up with the niece's face, midline. If I need to move it a little bit, the alginate is soft enough that I can do that. You'll also notice that I've pulled her cheeks up and out, which is trimming that impression a little bit. But there's one other thing I want you to notice. And I am very relaxed. I'm standing upright, my shoulders are relaxed, my elbows are down, I'm not all winged in here trying to get the impression in, I'm not fighting Denise, and actually a patient feels the relaxed effort that you're giving it and they will relax. You don't have to get them to pull their feet up off the chair, you don't have to throw salt down their throat. Also, you can turn and say to them, looking at the timer, We've only got 47 seconds left. Right then, that patient can stop panicking if they don't feel like they can breathe. Once again, to recap a little bit, I used this mirror when I put that impression tray in. You notice I did it when I tried the trays in. I'm going to use it when I take the tray out. I would encourage you to always keep this mirror handy when you're putting a tray in. If you're by yourself, Lay that mirror on the patient's shoulder right there. Mix your impression material, put it in the tray. When you go to put the tray in the mouth, you got the, the mirror right there to pick up and put that tray in. This one step, if you don't do anything else, this one step 
will make your life a whole lot easier. Now, when the beep goes off, we'll remove this tray, we'll pop down in the back, and I'll remove the tray with my mirror. Step seven is to thoroughly evaluate the impression. We've got a nice roll around. We've picked up all the hard and soft structures. There's not a lot of bubbles. This is a beautiful impression. I would also tell you that if you do have some big void or big bubble someplace, just take another impression. It's not worth trying to work around it or grinding it off or something like that. The eighth step in this whole process is to disinfect and store the impression. Now, in dentistry, we're really big on the whole cross-contamination thing. And we're all standing in this operatory. And I want you to know that it's the operatory is where you disinfect the impression. The operatory. You're going to get blood in an impression. I mean, you're going to have pus in an impression. You're going to have all kinds of stuff in an impression. And one of the things I want you to do is just rinse it with clear water, cool, clear water. And then we use a spray bottle with a little chlorhexidine gluconate which is a uh, antibacterial, and then we'll rinse it out of there. It's as simple as that, and I would encourage you to do it in the operatory, and that stops that cross-contamination at the door of the operatory. Plus, the operatory is set up to do all this disinfecting, like we do when we clean a room. We'll then take this impression, we'll wrap it in a little piece of uh, wet paper towel. We'll take a Ziploc bag, write the patient's name on it with a Sharpie pen, put it in the bag, and then we'll work on getting the lower. But that bag will keep, act like a humidor and keep the moisture in the impression and keep it from drying out and shrinking. You're going to want to pour this impression uh, as soon as you possibly can. Don't wait till the next day and all that. Go ahead and try and get it done as soon as you can within a couple hours if possible. Now let's turn our attentions and take a lower impression because I want to show you a couple of things about a lower impression that are a little bit different than the upper. Kathy's going to give me a little bit of alginate for my finger. I got my mirror in my left hand and I'm going to wipe just a little bit on the occlusal surfaces of the teeth and as I do it I wipe my finger out this way and it forces some alginate under her tongue. This is going to keep us from getting bubbles on the occlusal surface and it'll run a little alginate into the floor of the mouth. Then with my tray that has wax on it Notice I'm able to get that tray in because I've got this mirror in my hand. I'm going to have Denise lift her tongue up and stick it out at me and relax it. Now if I want to move that tray, now's the time. And one of the things on the lower I want you to notice is I have moved around to the front of the chair. We have elevated Denise up this way a little bit so that I can work right straight in. And once again, I want you to notice my shoulders are relaxed, my elbows are down. The patient feels that I'm comfortable. Stick your tongue out one more time, okay? I can then muscle trim this impression by pulling up on her cheeks. I can have her stick her tongue out. And if you want to, you can ask a patient, is it pinching you anywhere? Mm -hmm. Good. But while the alginate is still a little soft, you still have the ability to move it around if you want to. So if you're poking them on one side, you can kind of shift it a little bit. I can verify that my midline is in line with the little hole of the alginate tray, and our timer is going to tell us when to take the tray out. We're not going to have to dig in it with our thumbnail. Some of you may use the alginate impression material that changes color. I think it's called chromapan or photochrome or chromapan. I don't recommend it, it's a fast set alginate and, uh, and the patient can't see it change color. They can hear that timer and they can hear that bell going off. We've only got an hour and 50 minutes left. <laughs> okay, our timer is beeping back there. Now everybody in the room knows we can take that out. I'm going to lift it up in the back, try and break that seal under the tongue. I can use my mirror to help me get all this out of her mouth. Very good. Look how the rim lock tray forces you to have a nice roll. We're in the tray symmetrically. We don't have any bubbles on the occlusal surface and we've got a nice 
registration of the floor of the mouth and the retromylohyoid fossa. We set our timer, we wiped some alginate on the teeth, we used a mirror to retract. Now we're going to evaluate that impression. It looks good. We'll take it over, we'll rinse it with a little bit of cool water, we'll disinfect it, rinse it out, then we'll get us a wet paper towel and store it in the same bag that her upper impression's in to be poured as soon as we can get it back into the lab. I would encourage you to spend some training time on this very step because this is kind of the first step with a lot of patients that you see if you're doing a new patient exam. And you have an opportunity here to show this new patient to your practice that you're not like all the other dentists. You know your stuff, you and your dental assistant know how to work together seamlessly, and you're able to answer any question they have about this process. And frankly, you're gonna be able to get a set of exquisite study casts out of this technique. This is also easy to learn if you use these eight keys or these eight steps. And it's a way you as the dentist can go back and reassess and say, you know, we didn't put any wax on this one. That's why we didn't get in the floor of the mouth. So let's remember to do that from now on. We didn't set a timer. We pulled the alginate and it got stuck on all the teeth. That sort of thing. So it's that whole determination, communication, and verification process that the eight keys to beautiful alginate impressions will give you in your office.